this robot actuator has massive torque, position feedback, no backlash, and yes, it is wireless. Why did I go through countless trials and tribulations to create it? The answer is wire management. Let's face it, it is the worst part of any robotics or mechatronics project. In this video, I will show you how I went about this project. I will also put the actuator to test to find out if it meets the requirements. Stick around to find out how it performs. The first thing to tackle was the motor. Weighing all my options, I decided to go with a stepper motor, specifically a NEMA 17 stepper motor. I will use a magnetic encoder to get position feedback to achieve closed loop control and I will use some sort of a drive train to deal with the low torque. This will take care of the drawbacks of using a stepper motor. The next choice to make was the drive train which will amplify the torque put out by the stepper motor. The NEMA 17 motor I have has a holding torque of 3.2 kg centimeter or 0.31 newton meters. To get any meaningful use in a 6 axis robot type application, I am aiming for the actuator to output about 50 kg centimeter torque. That gives a reduction ratio of about 16 for our drivetrain. To achieve that, I started experimenting with 3D printed cycloidal gears. I printed this cycloidal gearbox designed by the White Owls that had a reduction ratio of 48 to 1. Honestly, such a high reduction ratio in such a compact form factor felt too good to be true. But I wanted to give it a shot anyway. The gearbox consists of a casing which has 49 double pins. An eccentric nut makes the cycloidal disc slide over these pins. The sliding of the load pins that are attached to a load bearing plate provides the final rotational motion. But as is always the case in engineering, if it appears too good to be true, it usually is. The gearbox had a terrible backlash as you can see here. The reduction ratio it provided was nowhere close to the theoretical value of 48 to 1. At a distance of 12.5 cm, it could lift a weight of 2.5 kg. Anything more and the gearbox struggled to handle it. That is a torque of about 31.25 kg cm or 3 Nm. That is approximately 10 times the torque of my NEMA 17 motor. Decent but not enough. Because the gearbox is printed with soft plastic PLA, it is very easy for the gears on the cycloidal disc to skip rather than slide over the dowel pins. You can hear the noise this skipping makes when a higher weight is applied. I could have tried to improve upon this design but I realized that it would be very tricky to get it to a point where it would be reproducible and repeatable especially considering that I could vote to make it only with 3D printing. Also in the long run, the wear on the 3D printed parts would only make matters worse. So I had to abandon the idea of using a cycloidal gearbox. My next attempt was to use belt driven system for my drivetrain after I stumbled upon a video by Emilio Stuff. Belt driven drives are used by large industrial robots very often so I decided to give it a shot. My design consists of pulleys with a 4 is to 1 reduction ratio on the input side and the output side providing a combined ratio of 16 is to 1. The tension in the belts can be adjusted by moving these blocks. The design also allows me to swap between NEMA 23 and NEMA 17 motors without much hassle. There is space in the design for a AS5600 magnetic encoder so that we know the exact position of the joint for closed loop control. I started off my build by printing all the components. I'm using these threaded inserts wherever I have bolt holes. So I inserted those next in the printed parts using a soldering iron. After that, the assembly itself is very sequential and intuitive. The bottom casing attaches to the motor. Then the pulleys and the shaft are assembled on the input side. The nylon spacers prevent too much friction between the static casing and the rotating pulleys. Then the belt is inserted loosely for now. This completes the input side. But before I start the output side, I will assemble the magnetic encoder with the top casing and then bolt the top casing with the rest of the assembly. The output shaft has a magnet glued to it. When the shaft rotates, the magnet rotates with it. The change in the magnetic field is registered by the encoder and is converted to an angle value which allows us to get the position feedback. The rest of the assembly process is very similar to that of the input side. Then the top cover gets positioned. With that done, I can now tighten the belts like so. I have connected the output shaft to a rigid shaft coupler which holds an arm for demonstration purposes. This completes the gearbox assembly. I have uploaded the CAD files along with the list of components to a GitHub repo linked in the video description. 
Now let's move on to the electronics. I custom designed a PCB for this using KiCad which is an open source PCB design software. You can download the KiCad files or the Gerber files for the PCB if you want to make one for yourself. First choice to make was that of the microcontroller that will communicate wirelessly with something like a PC or a phone and tell our stepper motor when and how much to move. Considering its wireless communication capabilities, the ESP32 was an obvious choice here. The program to be uploaded to the ESP32 is also in the GitHub repo. The code allows us to set up a web server using the ESP32. The ESP32 prints out an IP address in the serial terminal on startup. We can input this IP address in a web browser. This opens up a web page through which we can send directions and steps to the ESP32. The web page also displays the angular position measured by the magnetic encoder. I'm using a 7.4 1300mAh battery which connects to one of these headers. The other header can be used to charge the battery. The stepper motor is being driven by a Pololu DRV8834 stepper motor driver. The stepper motor connects to this header and then finally the AS5600 magnetic encoder connects here. After all of that, it is now time to move on to the most exciting part which is testing. Let's see if there is any backlash. I'm trying to move the arm with quite a bit of force but it barely moves. Most of the movement is actually due to the entire assembly moving when I apply a load. Using the web interface, I can make the motor move to specific locations. The motion is very repeatable too. The angle values are also updating appropriately. Everything looks great so far. Now let's see what the holding torque capacity is. I will start off with a weight of 2.5 kgs at a distance of 11.5 centimeters. That constitutes a torque of 28.75 kg centimeter or 2.82 newton meters. It supports that comfortably. What if I double it? The arm sags a bit but the actuator is able to handle this load. Let me add 1.5 kgs to it. Oh. That seems to be the limit. It can bear a load of 5 kgs at 11.5 cm. So that would be a holding torque of 57.5 kg centimeters or 5.6 newton meter. The motor specifications suggest that it has a holding torque of 0.65 newton meters. But when I measured it, it was nowhere close to that. I got a holding torque of 3.15 kg centimeter or 0.31 newton meters for the motor. So the holding torque provided by the actuator is 18.1 times that of the motor. Our theoretical reduction ratio is 16. A value higher than that seems to suggest that the friction in the system seems to be helping with the holding torque. Now that we have the holding torque, let's check out the dynamic torque capacity. I will start off with a weight of 2.5 kg at 11.5 cm. It seems like it can handle that very well. If I add 2 kgs to it, so a total weight of 4.5 kgs, it seems to manage that well too. The actuator could manage a dynamic load of 4.5 kg at a distance of 11.5 cm. So the dynamic torque is 51.75 kg cm or 5 Newton meter. That is massive for a NEMA 17 stepper motor. With my current 1300 mAh battery, I could use this at a stretch for 25 minutes. I would want to improve that, but overall, I'm very satisfied with how this build turned out. I have several ideas about how I can use these in my future robotics projects. I want to try a few techniques to make sure the communication between these is seamless and without lag when a bunch of them are used together. In my next video, I'm going to create a few smaller variations of these so that I can use a combination of these to create a robotic arm. If you like the content in this video and would like to see how I create a robotic arm with these actuators, please subscribe to the channel. It will help me a lot as I'm just starting on my YouTube journey. See you all in the next video.